going to be working out of the book Linear Freedom, specifically the first three chapters. Chapter 1 deals with phrases with a single bass drum. Chapter 2 deals with phrases with two consecutive bass drum strokes, and Chapter 3 combines those. So we are dealing with single bass drum strokes and consecutive bass drum strokes in combined phrases. First things first, we need to be sure we are comfortable with those basic phrases and we also need to have a bit of knowledge on how to apply these basic phrases before we start looking at the longer phrases from the studies. I'm going to take one of the basic phrases from chapter one, which is a four note phrase with a single bass drum. This is right, left, right, kick. My first job when working on this is to make sure I'm comfortable working this around the kit. So as this is a 16th note phrase, we want to phrase it as 16th notes against a hi-hat pulse, and if you're using one, which you should be, a metronome, getting comfortable orchestrating this anywhere around the drums. So the basic phrase is right, left, right, kick. We want to be comfortable with this phrase in multiple ways. We want to be comfortable orchestrating it around the drums, and we want to be comfortable with it loudly, quietly, and with various accents. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate these concepts, taking that simple four note phrase around the drums, all the while against a quarter note pulse on the hi-hat. One E and a, two E and a. So all of that was just from that one phrase, right, left, right, kick, phrased as 16th notes. But you can see with some clever application of dynamics, orchestration, ghost notes and accents, we can get some really interesting phrases going on. So that is your first job. As we are in a jazz context, we want to be changing the rhythm slightly. We want to be breaking away from 16th notes and instead swinging these as 8th notes, swung 8th notes. So a standard 8th note, we count it as 1 and 2 and. Well, our jazz 8th notes, our swung 8th notes are going to delay that to essentially either side of a triplet. 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. A, a basic shuffle rhythm, right? And again, because we're in a jazz context, I'm going to break away from having the quarter note pulse on all four beats, and instead I'm just going to have that quarter note on beats 2 and 4. So I'm going to be feeling this 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. A. Straight away we can hear the jazz influences there, we've got this swung eighth note pattern going on, we've got this orchestration, we've got some accent patterns melodically playing around the toms. So let's take a closer look at what's actually going on there. First thing I talked about was orchestration. This is the simple act of moving. So we're going to take our basic phrase and we're going to move it around the drums. If you like, you can drop that hi-hat while you're getting comfortable with it. I'm going to keep it on two and four just for reference. Now just at the end there, I started to split the hands. So our second level of orchestration is to take one of the hands around the drums while the other hand stays where it is. So for this example, my right hand is going to move around the toms, while my left hand stays where it is on the snare drum. Same phrase, same rhythm. One, a two, a three, a four. <laughs> From there, 
I can start to move that right hand freely, keeping the left hand still on the snare drum. Then we can reverse that, keep the right hand where it is, keep that left hand moving around the toms. That one's going to be a little bit more awkward because you're going to have a bit of crossover if you want to send that left hand across to the other side of the kit. So just play around with this, see how comfortable and how practical it is. I tend to try and avoid crossing over where possible, but from a technical exercise, it's nice to be able to move that left hand as well. Finally, we want to be able to move both of those hands, but not to the same place. We want to split those hands completely freely. So those hands are going to be moving every note, still playing that same phrase in the same rhythm. Coordination wise, technically that's a really great starting point. We've got a simple phrase here that we're working in an interesting way. We've got control over the orchestration and hopefully we're starting to gain control with taking those hands around the drums separately from one another. Now, everything we've just played so far is an exercise. They sound like exercises. So jazz is obviously about phrasing, it's about rhythm, it's about call and response and reacting to what's going on with the music. That's very hard to practice on your own, but not impossible. A simple way of doing this on the drums is as a call and response or a kind of question and answer type thing. So I'm going to use just this same phrase, but hopefully try and apply a bit more musicality to it in my orchestration. So I'm no longer going to try orchestrating randomly. I'm going to maybe suggest a phrase and then expand on it in the second bar. Something like that to try and get these phrases actually talking. You'll see what I mean. Something like that is a simple introduction into how you might actually phrase a jazz bass drum solo. Now, you will have noticed I broke away once or twice from the very strict sticking of that phrase. Just a few times I broke away from it. That's absolutely fine because now we're trying to serve the music rather than be married religiously to this particular pattern. However, everything I played was very certainly based, very definitely based in that basic phrase, right, left, right, kick. So don't be afraid to break out of it somewhat if it serves the phrase, but at its heart I'm still essentially playing that same basic pattern. Now we're going to get somewhere a little bit more interesting, a little bit more challenging. We're going to retain that four note phrase, right, left, right, kick, but we're going to take it out of its natural note value. What I mean by that is as a four note phrase, this is going to sit nicely in eighth notes and sixteenth notes. I'm going to take it out of that and I'm going to play it as triplets instead. As we know, jazz is a genre of music based in groups of three. Essentially, it's triplet based, so it makes sense to take what we're working on both as swung eighth notes and as triplets. This is where we start modulating this phrase from eighth notes into triplets. The key here is counting. So I'm still going to be playing right, left, right, kick, right, left, right, kick. However, I'm going to be counting this one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. To begin with, you don't even need to do this on the drums. You can do it just between your, your thigh and the floor, just trying to practice that pattern, but counting it in a different way. 
one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. The great thing here, a group of four played as triplets will fit neatly into a bar of four four. So we don't need to modulate over the bar line. As you saw there, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. I'm back round to the start on bar number one. I'll do that around the drums this time with a quarter note pulse. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. Bring back our two and four on the hi-hat and apply the same motifs we were working with earlier, our same, col our same concepts, our same elements, so the orchestration, the dynamics, the accents and the ghost notes. Now we're starting to get something really rhythmic, something really interesting, and something that's quite a challenge as well. Your main goal there is not in the playing so much as in the counting, the feeling of that is triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a... Now we're going to pause here and we're going to see how we're getting on with this and start to apply this. So I'm going to trade with myself. I'm going to play four bars of time on the cymbal, just nice and simple jazz time. And then I'm going to take a four bar drum solo and I'm going to keep swapping back and forth between the two, four bars of each. And I'm going to try and apply this phrase in the way that we've just been practicing it. Let's see what happens. Now, we can start to make this more interesting by extending our phrase length. Currently, we've only looked at a four note phrase. Well, now we're gonna combine those together. For those of you with the book, if you have a look at page 47, Accent Study 7 from Linear Freedom, and look at bar number two on the top line. For those of you without the book, it looks like this. You can see we've got a four beat phrase made up of four four note phrases, very similar to the ones we've just practiced. If we explore that four note beat as it's written, as 16th notes against a hi-hat pulse, it sounds like this. Three E and a four E and a. So 
firstly, we want to treat it the same way we treated the first phrase we looked at earlier. We want to turn it to eighth note swing. We want to play it against a hi-hat pattern of two and four. We want to orchestrate it. We want to apply dynamics, accents, and ghost notes. Now that in itself is already a really nice sounding phrase. So let's try that in context. I'll do four bars of swing and then I will take that bar four bars. I'll take that phrase four bars. Now, it is a one bar phrase when written as 16th notes. Because I'm playing it as eighth notes, that splits it into two bars. So I'm actually going to get to play the whole phrase twice through as swung eighth notes. So I'll do four bars of time, four bars in total of that phrase. get a little bit tricky. We're going to take our four beat phrase and we're going to take it out of eighth notes and sixteenth notes like we did with our first phrase and we're going to turn it into triplets instead. So we are no longer feeling this one, a uh, two, a uh, three, a uh, four. Uh. We're going to keep that same four beat phrase but we're going to feel it as one and a two and a three and a four and a. So we're kind of straying into polyrhythmics here and the first thing we need to do is figure out how many bars this is going to take to resolve. And the way we do that is we look for the lowest common multiple of two numbers. The first number we look for is how long the phrase is in notes. This is a 16 note phrase, four lots of 16th notes, 16. So the first number we're working with is 16. The second number we're working with is the length of the rhythm in which we are playing it. We are playing it as triplets, right? Now triplets are groups of three, and there are four of them per bar. So in one bar, you have 12 rhythmic notes. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So on the one hand, we have a 16 note pattern. On the other hand, we have a 12 note rhythm. We are looking for the lowest common multiple of both 16 and 12. Quick maths, 48. What we then do is divide that down and we work out that we are gonna to get to play our phrase three times but it is going to take four bars to complete. That is a big topic. We don't need to worry too much about that now. For our current purposes, we need to know that this phrase is going to take four bars of triplets to complete. So I will show that for you right now. The hi-hat is on the quarter note pulse. I'm feeling this one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So if you were counting there, every time I finished the phrase, we have completed four bars of triplets, one and a two and a three and a four and a two and a two and a, and so on. So again, this is a counting game first and foremost, but we're going to apply our same steps we did previously. I'm going to orchestrate this around the drums first of all, and show you what this actually sounds like against that quarter note pulse. Pretty hard to follow if you're not used to counting that. So let's do what we did before. Let's trade fours. This is going to work nice and neatly because as we've just worked out, our new polyrhythmic linear phrase sits neatly into four bars. So four bars of time, four bar phrases, triplets. Let's see what it sounds like.
and because of the main concepts behind linear freedom, we never have to worry about our sticking. That is all taken care of for us. We're always going to end up on the off hand, so our right hand, our strong hand is ready to resume the beat. So this is why this material is so effective. Finally then, we can combine our two rhythms now. We can do some cool and interesting call and response stuff where we're jumping between the swing eighth notes and the triplets. So ignoring the trading for now, if I just solo freely, I'm going to use this phrase, but I'm going to switch it between those two rhythmic values. So hopefully you can hear there, there's a lot of potential with this, you can have a lot of fun with it and it sounds great. It sounds interesting as well when you modulate the phrases out of their natural values. So today we've taken simple four note phrases, expanded that to 16 note phrases, but then we've played that as three and 12 note rhythms. We've played them as triplets and we've played them into a bar of triplets as well. So I encourage you to explore this stuff, it can be really exciting, it's really good fun to play and it's a great way to practice your linear playing if nothing else. So the book is called Linear Freedom, it's out now for those of you that want to explore this further. Bear in mind today we've looked no further than chapter 3 out of 10 or 11 chapters, something like that. So there's loads in there to get your teeth sunk into. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you'll check out some of my other videos, like and subscribe for more and I will see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Thank you.